Everyone has vagas, I think they're boring at this stage. Golden Goose remind me of adult Lily Kelly's. Golden Goose much more stylish and less clumpy. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, it's a very highly requested and a very debatable topic. I put this over my Instagram and I could not believe the polls. Today we are talking all about Golden Goose versus Vejas two extremely popular shoe brands at the moment. We discussed on my Instagram whether Vejas are just a trend at the moment, will they pass? Like Golden Goose have been around for like the last 20 years and they're not going anywhere. A lot of people have an issue with how grubby um, and distressed the Golden Goose actually come when they're brand new. Other people have an issue with how chunky and wide the Vejas are. Some people think that the Vejas are very classy, very elegant, clean, crisp looking, while other people think that they look bland and basic. So definitely a really mixed opinion. Even though the vast majority of my followers do prefer Vejas, there was a lot of hardcore Golden Goose fans there, like myself, and one girl even said, I think because everyone hates them, it makes me love them more. And to be honest, I kind of feel like that too. But let's get into the video. I have a big bag next to me of my collection of both. So we're going to be talking everything from pricing, sizing, wear and tear, all that good stuff. So make sure to stay tuned. And just to make this video even more exciting, I'm giving away a 100 euro all sold voucher where you can get your own pair of Vejas. There's also Doc Martens, Converse Uggs, Vans, coat shoes, Michael Kors, so loads of designer shoes to choose from, so make sure that you like this video, comment below, let me know your favourite pair of designer shoes, or if you'd pick Golden Goose, or Vejas, what's your favourite thing about each pair, Watch out, whatever you want to comment at all, just so I can pick someone when I'm scrolling through, and also make sure that you're subscribed to my channel, and also follow over on Instagram, and also make sure to check out All Soul, because they have some amazing stock, and they always do really good sales, and have great discount codes, so enjoy that, and thanks so much to All Soul for giving me this uh, voucher to give away to you guys, I feel like every YouTube video at the moment has a giveaway, which I love doing, because I love thanking you guys for supporting me, and my channel, and helping it grow, so best of luck and I'm very jealous because I would love a 100 euro all sold voucher myself. So firstly let's go through my collection because I, I have a few different styles of both shoes. Um, I have gone through a lot of pair of Golden Goose and I have bought ones new and sold them on. I've bought one second hand and sold them on and I think that they're one of these things that you nearly get addicted to buying. They're kind of like, they nearly feel like a collector's item so I like buying them, growing my collection and then like selling them on or like swapping them for another pair. I I just think that I'm going to be growing my Golden Goose collection forever and oh my goodness guys when I say the first time I saw Golden Goose I was like who in their right mind pays between 300 to 700 euro for a pair of shoes that come with holes in them and dirty and it wasn't until I saw them in person and I got more into fashion that I started learning more about like the background of brands and like what it stands for and I will be talking about that in regards to both brands as well because as you know Veja is actually a Brazilian company I think they're made in Brazil anyway and sustainability is a massive part of their brand so they are made out of recycled materials. Golden Goose is also made out of recycled materials, canvas and leather and they are a handcrafted Italian leather which I just find so so comfortable whereas with the Vejas they can sometimes be a little hard around the thumb. A lot of people have said that they find Vejas really hard to break in and just in general really uncomfortable. I actually have found that all the pairs I have had were really comfortable except for I had a velcro pair and I didn't find them comfortable. They were also kind of plasticky and that's one thing that I do get um, one thing that I do think about the Vejas is that they can look a little bit plasticky and I think that's what gives them the crisp clean look but when you see them in person sometimes they actually can look not the best quality wise but I think that depends on the one that you have because these are the V... 12s and I really really like this really nice shape they are wider than a golden goose but they are um, nice and narrow still and really flat around the foot and also this part even though it's not white I actually didn't like this at the start when I started um, looking into buying Vejas and stuff I used to think that these are very grubby um, but now I actually quite like it but if you look at my pair of V10s I think they're I think these oh no sorry these are the Campo then this part of the sole definitely looks more grubby. Like this came quite white. So I think in regards to the, the wear and tear and the dirt element of them, 
I think that these can get quite dirty and they're not the easiest to clean. These two, not too bad. This pair is brilliant for keeping clean. This part is really good for keeping clean in this aspect, but the sole will never go back to the original color it was, but I have a major issue with this um, pair. I got this pair of V12s and they were my absolute favorite. They are the mesh pair. Now, I don't think it's gonna show up on the camera, but these got dirty, so like they look really clean now with the lights and stuff, but all of the sole wore really, really quickly. Um, I used to wear them like, not even going on a muddy walk, just like walking around town. I wore them on a walk at the beach one time and I came home and they were absolutely filthy and I actually sent them away to get professionally cleaned. And when they came back, they were definitely a lot better and brighter looking, but I feel like they're just, they're still getting dirty. And I put them in the washing machine. Like, as I said, they don't look that bad by any means with the bright lights on them, but in person, they're not in bad condition at all either. Like, I still wear them. I'm actually selling them at the moment. And when I put up about selling them, I was like, make sure you take a look at this before you, um, before you're interested in buying, because this was actually, this annoyed me because Vejas I feel aren't meant to have that distressed look so when mine started to get dirty I was kind of like oh that's annoying which is what I actually enjoy about the Golden Goose and this was a major major focal point I think that was sent in hundreds of times why would you pay so much for a pair of shoes that come dirty and here is my my thought process on it right so you are getting these shoes that come dirty, right? But what does that mean? It means that they're already broken in because I've seen the way that they do it in some of the videos. They like hold them up against kind of twirly things and stuff. They're very, very soft. They're handcrafted Italian leather. They're much better um, for your foot ways. Now I do wear insoles um, like orthotics because I have flat feet, but I feel like if you don't wear insoles, these definitely have a much better um, arch support and a better sole, especially the high stairs. Now, someone else sent in, they're both quite flat, and they definitely are, but in the um, Golden Goose, you can actually get the high stair pair too, which has a bit of a platform, which I love. But the thing that I actually really like about the Golden Goose that turned me off at the very start is that they have some dirt on them. Now, when I say that, there are some pairs that are far, far, far too out there for my liking that they really do just look like they're a pair of runners that you wore for far too long and they need to go in the bin. But I don't mind the ones that are slightly distressed, especially on the sole, because I think you're less likely to be like worried about wearing them. When I wear my Alexander McQueen's, my Balenciaga's especially, because they're impossible to keep clean and hard to clean when they get dirty, I'm like very aware of where I'm wearing them to, how I'm wearing them, like making sure that nothing spills on them. Whereas with these, if they get dirty or if they get more marks, it doesn't matter because they come with them on anyway, which I think is what you want when you're investing in an expensive pair of shoes. You want to be able to wear them, you want to be able to be comfortable in them, and you don't want to be watching your every move, which is how I feel in other shoes. And especially when I was wearing these ones, I was kind of like, oh my God, every time I wear them, because it's like this kind of mesh material, it's just grabbing kind of dust and stuff. But yeah, it actually makes more sense now the more I think about it because I feel like, and that's another reason why I like buying pre-loved bags and stuff, if they have a few marks on them, a few scratches, you're going to wear them out because you're going to be like, this is what shoes are for, bags are for, for wearing and using. Whereas if something's too picture perfect, you're nearly, I don't even want to use it and you're like jumping over puddles and everything, which is like, it makes you less likely to want to wear them in my opinion. But I do love both. I'm going to be continuing to talk through them all. But I think foot-wise, comfort-wise, and what's actually better for your foot, I am going to say the Golden Goose. And this was something that people asked a lot was about the air support. Are they super flat like Converse? Can you walk in them? Can you stand in them? And I think that the Vejas are quite flat. There's no air support in them, really. Whereas with these, because they're the Italian leather as well, they're going to kind of mow to your foot and the insole is a much better quality and harder. There's definitely more support in them. Um, and especially like the high sole ones are absolutely incredible. The insole in them is like this thick and they give you a nice bit of height. So if you're looking for a pair of shoes, obviously they're not walking shoes or like for going on a run or going for a walk all day every day, go for something like Skechers in that aspect. But if you want a pair of shoes that you can go on a shopping trip or go on a spin or go for a small walk or walk around town and you want a pair of shoes that you're not gonna be in bits in or even for work, 
I would definitely pick the Gorda Goose over the Vegas. Now in saying that, like I said, I have my insoles that go into them. You can actually buy them in foot solutions. So if you are finding that you have a pair of Vegas or Gorda Goose or any other pair of shoes that are too flat converse, um, putting in an insole, even a half insole, just to give you a bit more support is really, really helpful. Wear and tear of both. Okay, right. So I don't have any of these pairs long. They're actually all new, but when I was wearing my Gorda Goose during the summer, they were so, so well. Um, I even got a suede pair of the high stairs and I wore them in the rain one day. I was like, oh my God, they're gonna be ruined. There's gonna be rain stains and specks all over them. Or whatever way that they were made, it just dried and it was brilliant, which was so ideal. And um, they wear and tear, absolutely brilliant. I find that they actually don't get that dirty either. They must spray them that they don't get any dirtier afterwards. I think they're really easy to wipe down too. Obviously these pairs now won't be as easy because they're so sparkly. But any pair that is kind of the leather is super easy to wipe down. This one does have a bit of suede on the inside so this might be a little bit harder. But um, the pair that I was wearing all through the summer was simple to keep clean. Wear and tear brilliant. They don't get damaged. They don't get soft or like bend at the sides. That's one thing I have noticed about, I think it's this pair. If you can see there, the side is starting to lift a little bit. Another thing in regards to quality, the sole on Vegas is not great. The first time I wore these without my insoles, as you can see, you can nearly feel the groan through them. Like I went on a walk um, and I could feel like stones sticking into my foot, which really bothered me. Whereas with the sole on the Ve on the Go to Goose, even though it's flat still, it's rock, rock, rock hard and not in an uncomfortable way because I kind of thought that at the start. There's a really nice support, but the tongue is really soft, especially on this pair. The sparkly pairs are a little bit rougher, but that's kind of an issue I think where a lot of people have pain with the Vegas is the tongue and the heel. I actually had no problem with it. My main problem was the first day I wore them or even tried them on at the shop or something when I had no insoles on I could literally feel the ground through it so I feel like even if you don't need insoles get yourself a pair because it'll make them so much comfier but it's only when you actually feel them like this that you're like oh my god that doesn't feel good um, and maybe it's because it's a recycled material or something I'm not 100% sure but it's definitely very, very soft and you can feel the ground, which is, I think, why so many people wrote into our poll being like, Golden Goose are just way more comfortable. Some people were like, I'm not a fan of the look of Golden Goose, I'm not a fan of the price of Golden Goose, but I have to admit that they're much more comfy. And they feel better for your foot. So if that's, if comfort is a thing for you, I still find these really comfy. I've worn these for a walk. I ended up wearing them on a walk around the woods and I found them grand once I had the insole in it. So. Even if you don't need one, would recommend getting a nice thick insole. Like quality wise, definitely these ones are cheaper. They're not as made to the same extent as these. Still a really comfortable, still a really good quality shoe, but I'm definitely noticing that this part is getting softer. Over time, it'll probably get a hole in it, I'd say. Um, and this part is starting to lift. I feel like this shoe you wouldn't have forever. You definitely have it for a year, over a year. They last really well, but wear and tear wise, I feel like these definitely get dirtier quicker. They're harder to clean and they're getting quite soft and kind of bendy here, which is not ideal. Whereas these ones, like they don't bend there, which, you know, some people are like, that's really annoying for walking in, but they come really hard. Like this has the tag on and everything, but when your foot is in it and it's molding to it, over time, it'll be a lot easier to walk in and, and nearly it's like it's made for your foot, but like, the quality and the support of these is just much better. Um, but again, that's going to be down to price. Like they're handcrafted Italian leather, whereas the Vegas are that little bit cheaper and um, not as, I'm not going to say not as comfortable. I'm just looking here, a lot of messages are here saying, had Vegas, not that comfortable. Vegas, not that comfortable. I go for a golden goose because of the comfort. Heard Vegas are killer to break in. So everyone's experience is different. I've heard from people as well that Alexander McQueen runners are impossible to break in and so painful and I had no issues there. So it really depends on the shape and the size of your foot and everything. And I think that the fact that I wear insoles actually really helps me. They, these shoes will last you forever. I've never heard of anyone say that they got like a hole in them or had to go in the bin or anything like that's why the longevity and the kind of sustainability aspect of golden goose really kind of interests me like you can sell them on a vestiaire collective someone else will buy them they'll sell them on which is really cool another point that i definitely want to touch on is price now there's a massive price difference between the vejas and golden goose so vejas um retail for around 100 120 130 euro you can buy them on Bert thomas and um, sea green um 
and other stories on the Veja website and then Golden Goose range from in and around 200 in and up to 700 and something um, and they can be bought from Brown Thomas, they can be bought on Coggles, oh Vejas can be bought on Coggles and All Soul as well and Shauna 20 will work on some of the Vejas on All Soul which is really handy. But you can get the Golden Goose, they're a little bit harder to get. Vestier Collective is one of my go-tos. Um, Luxury Exchange does both Vejas and Golden Goose. But my favourite site for getting my Golden Goose, and I'm very, very lucky in this sense, and it brings down the price a good bit, is Smallable. I have gotten this pair and a few other pairs from Smallable, which is a kids boutique online. I think Bambino or Bambini does um, Golden Goose too, up to like a six or seven, I think. Um, there's a lot of styles in two, three, four, and five. So if you're any of them, you're absolutely sorted. So definitely have a look there. And then Vestiaire Collective will be another one. So if you want to bring down the price, like I said, because you're getting them pre-loved, even if they're not in immaculate condition, you're not going to mind because it's all part of the branding. And as a marketing nerd and someone who's really into brand messaging and the whole behind, like the background of brands and why they do what they do, and packaging is a massive thing for me as well. Go to use wins hands down. So. I think Vejas are very true to themselves, very minimalistic, pop of colour, quite sleek, quite cool, um, all about sustainability, just comes in a plain recyclable brown box. And I do love my Vejas, I think that they're absolutely fab for summer, I guess. I really, really think I wore my Vejas more in the summer than the Golden Goose because again, the crisp, clean white effect looks nice next to a tan. Whereas coming into winter, I think I really like the sparkle and the kind of grungier look for wearing with like black jeans and leggings and stuff but when it comes to what you're actually buying and I suppose this would go into price as well when you're paying that at nearly triple the price you're definitely getting a really nice experience with it and I've never been to a go to goose shop before I wish I could but like the box is really cool and branded you actually get a passport with your shoes to like register them I've never done this before but it's really cool apparently you can like bring them around the world zoo or something and it tells you how many pairs have been registered near you or something along those lines but it's really cool golden goose passport and they just put so much detail and effort into the small details which i really like and i think that's a nice thing to do when you're after spending that much more um, and obviously that's not important to some people at all but i actually do like it so you have like your authenticity and then obviously their brand is all about being a dreamer and like living your best life so it comes in a gorgeous dust bag that says for dream use only not suitable for other activities it's just a really cool brand and that's kind of part of why the shoes are distressed as well because they want you to be very carefree living your best life your own authentic kind of self rather than like i said being too careful too perfect they're all about just wearing your shoes and living your best life now this pair was from my Teresa and this is an adult's pair, really really sparkly and this pair actually doesn't have much um, distressing on it. Now you actually can get pairs completely without, a lot of the high stars which are the ones with the platform will have no um, dirt or distressing on them and the pure star are completely crisp, plain um, white runners, kind of like the Alexander McQueen's. Um, but another thing that got sent in in regards to Golden Goose is some people were like, oh my god, I just hate how sparkly they are. They're too busy. They look like adult Lily Kellys or baby shams. And that is a plus for me because I love shoes that are unique. Golden Goose also don't sell a lot of the same style. It's very unusual that you'll bump into someone wearing the same pair. Whereas with the Vejas, I feel like they started out being quite like out there and now they're very mainstream and like everyone kind of has the same style or the same color. That might be important to you or that might not bother you at all. For me, it doesn't bother me at all. But when I'm buying something that's a bit more luxurious and I want to treat myself or have like a collector's item, I like it being unique and kind of different. Whereas I never feel like I'd buy a collection of Vajas because they all kind of look the same, like even in the different styles. They are quite similar, if that makes sense. Whereas if I show you Golden Goose, even though these are both sparkly, they look completely different besides the star, which I absolutely love. As you know, stars are like one of my favorite things. But you're definitely getting this kind of unusual experience nearly when you buy a pair of Golden Goose. And if you're interested in that, like there's really nice write-ups about it. If you go onto the website, there's loads of the behind the scenes of the brands. Um, like look here it says like departure time dear lover your golden goose journey starts here fast you see but enjoy it 
and this is really cool they go into a lot of detail about this kind of carefree um vibe which i really like so i'd love to know your opinion in regards to do you like the sleek kind of slight pop of color classy goes with everything or do you like that i want my shoe to be like the main the main character of my outfit let me know what you think and i do agree with the fact that gold goose are way too overpriced like I don't think any runner should be like three or 400 or I think 100 to 200 is more than enough and that's why I always go for uh, especially the plainer pairs of smallable or second hand. I'd only ever pay full price for like a really special unusual pair which was these from Firefetch because they were brand new season. I knew I looked everywhere first to get them second hand. That's another hack. Don't buy anything new until you look second hand because there's so many great second hand options now. But yeah, I definitely agree that the price point should be brought down. So I'm really looking forward to seeing if I get my cost per wears out of these. Are they going to last me years upon years to make it worth the money? Whereas like I feel like I bought these for about 120 and we'll see how much longer it is before I get a hole in this. Because if you were buying four pairs of Asia's and they get a hole or get damaged after a year that's like the same price as buying one pair go to use that might last you much longer so i guess it's up to yourself whether you prefer to have one pair that would last longer or go through different pairs next in relation to the distressed look of things and um, with vejas versus um golden goose i feel like if you're someone who likes to buy pre-loved or sell your things on going with the golden goose option is much better because again if they get a little bit dirty it doesn't really matter you're still going to be able to sell them for a really good price the resale value is well on golden goose is much better and um, i feel like if you're selling on beiges afterwards even if they're in immaculate condition you'd be selling them for in between 50 to like 70 euro whereas you could definitely sell um golden goose even the rarer kind or limited edition ones even if they're a little bit more um distressed and worn for a lot higher price points so if that's important to you definitely um another aspect to take into consideration next up let's talk sizing so this was a question as well that came in a lot especially in regards to Vasia. so this is going to be the main kind of focus of this part of the video because the sizing with Vasia's is just absolutely crazy like i bought um a four a five and a six and i've never been so mind blown in my whole life in one pair the four fit me perfectly on the foot but it was too tight on the width and i have a really narrow foot i was like what the hell it was like it was only letting me it was nearly like you know the way when you put on high heels there's like a pointy toe and your toe doesn't go the whole way it was actually with this style and um, these have been washed now with the washing machine and everything so they're very soft but when they first came they were rock hard and around this pointy part it was like my foot couldn't actually go into the toe area so i tried on the four the four kind of fit me fine but i just it felt really tight and i was like this is really weird i have a narrow foot so then I ended up boarding the five and I was like, the five is way too big. And I was like, this is making no sense. The four is too big for me, but too tight for me. And the five is just way too big. I ended up going with the five and just putting my insole into it and giving myself extra room on the toe, which I actually didn't mind. But I also ended up buying a six by accident in the, it's not the Campo pair. The Campo were fairly true to size. This is the... Campo, I'll put in a picture of this style that I tried. It was kind of like the ones that look like Reeboks. And I ordered a five, but a six came by accident. Um, and I put my foot into the six and oh my God, my toes were like this at the, start, at the top. I was like, did they put these in the wrong box or something? But they fully fit like a three, if not a two. Like it was insane. I was like, how is this a six? And I was like, is it a US six or something? It was a UK six and it was the weirdest fit I've ever seen in my whole life. And I get so many messages still about um, the fit of Asia's and I still can't figure it out. But one of the retailers, um, Sea Green, where I actually got both these pairs from, they put together a size guide. So definitely before you buy any of them, um, go over onto their Instagram page and find the Vasia, um size guide because it'll tell you which ones you should size up in, which ones you should size down in. I just kind of go for a five in all of them and they're a little bit too big for me because I actually am a four. I just go with a five in all runners because of the insole. This is my insole if anyone is wondering what it looks like. It's just from Foot Solutions. It's not a custom made pair. I just went in and walked in front of your man and he was like, yeah, you need like this level or whatever. And um, I actually need to get a new pair soon, I think, because they're not as hard as they used to be. Um, but the sizing in Vajas really is off. I would recommend trying them on before you buy them if you can or else like buy both pairs and send one pair back or whatever. 
But yeah, sizing's definitely a little bit harder to get right with the Vajas and I find it weird that all the different styles fit so differently because with the Golden Goose I find no matter what style I've gotten, the Velcro pair, the High Star, the Superstar, um, they've all fit the same. Even in the kids, the kids five and the adults five is the exact same which is brilliant. Um, and yeah, I would just say true to size. Some people say they're a little bit on the bigger and um, that you could size down but I wouldn't risk it. I think just staying normal is fine. Again, I just go with the five because I put the insole in. You're always better off when it comes to shoes to try them on and even if they don't have the color that you want, even try on the right style. So like going to Brown Thomas and try on a superstar and then whatever, work away. The same with these. If you wanted to go in to, again, Brown Thomas has the beige jazz and try on for size and then if they don't have the style you're looking for, um, or the color, sorry, but definitely try on, especially in these same styles, so the V10, the V12, the Campo, whatever, because you definitely won't be the same size in both, probably. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps in regards to size. Then people were asking about width, I kind of touched on this a while ago. Um, they look kind of similar like this, but definitely when they're on, these look a bit chunkier. Obviously nowhere near as chunky as like an Alexander McQueen or a Balenciaga, but these I find look more flattering on your foot. If I'm wearing like skinny jeans or something and I want my foot to like look kind of slimmer, longer, kind of elongate my leg, I'll always go for this. I find I can wear these with kind of flowy pants, maybe a day dress, but if I was wearing like a tight dress, I could actually get away with wearing these. They're just that little bit more dressier. Um, so if you want your foot to look a bit more narrower, we'll go for this. If you want something that's a little bit more, um, not even chunkier, but they definitely look clunkier, chunkier on the foot, but they're definitely not a chunky shoe by any means. Um, but you can see that they are like a bit more rounded and they're just a slight, when they're on your foot, they definitely look wider. So these, if you have a wider foot, would we'll go for the Vejas. I don't think that they have a wide selection, but um, again, they're quite soft and will kind of mold your foot. Similarly with these, but if you have a wide foot, I think that these might be too narrow, even though they definitely do mold. Um, and obviously you can like loosen the Velcro or loosen the laces, I think like, you could definitely make them a wider. I would recommend the mid stars or the high, not the high stars, the ones like the midi or high tops. If you have a wider foot, I think they're slightly wider, whereas with the super stars, they're quite sleek and slim. I think that's actually all the questions answered, guys. So comment below and let me know which pair you'd like. Let me know if there's any more um, questions, if I forgot anything, but I don't think I did. And I look forward to hearing your feedback because this is like such a good debate to be having. I'm actually going to start it as a series over on my Instagram and I'll do kind of videos to support our debates and polls over here. So next I think we're going to do maybe the Triple S Balenciaga versus the oversized um, trainer from um, Alexander McQueen. But yeah, let me know other brands, products, beauty, luxury, whatever you want. Um, and I will compare them if I have them. And I think Sweaty Betty's versus Lululemon is next on my list because I don't have either. So I want to see how I get on with them. But yes, do comment below. I can't wait to continue this conversation. I keep the debate going and the opinions. It's really great to see people talking about like what they like. And it's so interesting as well to see how different everyone's thoughts is. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and enjoyable. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts. And best of luck. And I'm so jealous to whoever wins the 100 euro voucher.